Hello, and welcome to part two of the 1969 America's War in Vietnam presentation. The last time we were talking about how My Lai was finally in the press of the United States, how Richard Nixon is now president and saying that he is going to be pulling American forces over the course of time out of Vietnam. And also we have Operation Menu. The menu, uh, Operation Menu, which was a codename for bombing campaigns that were started in Cambodia. So although Nixon is saying that he is de-escalating the war and bringing back troops, he is moving bombings into another country. And with this, although the American public do not know it 100% yet, we do have a building of a protest movement. So yes, people have been protesting the Vietnam War now for years, but the movement is growing and growing and growing, especially after the My Lai information comes out into the public. So on April 9th, 1969, 300 anti-war students at Harvard University seized the administration building. They threw out eight deans. They then locked themselves in and they said that they were going to continually stay in that building until the ROTC program was ended. They did not want to be training anybody or recruiting anybody to come into the military while on the college campus of Harvard. Now, although it takes quite some time, finally the police make the decision to go in and remove the 300 students out of the administration building. And they do it with billy clubs and mace because the students are not leaving uh, peacefully. Um, they are not just getting up and finally leaving. They are trying to stay in that building and they are trying to maintain that building. And so now this is showing the divisiveness within the nation itself. You have police officers going and doing their job to clear out that building. And yes, they are using billy clubs and mace to get these students out. And you have other students that are just trying to get their cause across to be able to try to take this building to end the ROTC program, but it's not going to work in the end. And so we're just seeing violence now at home with these protests. Another thing that is going to be coming out here is that the New York Times broke the news of the secret bombings in Cambodia in May 1969. This comes as a shock to Nixon because he was doing his best to keep this a secret. He didn't want anybody to know that this was going on. And so Nixon starts to have this paranoia build within him about leaks and about who can he trust, who can't he trust. And so he ordered the FBI to wiretap uh, four journalists, along with 13 government officials, to determine the source of the news leak. He wanted to go and figure this out out, which of course is kind of going against the freedom of the, of the press and other things. But this again is Tricky Dick doing what Tricky Dick does. He does tricks. So he is going out and doing wiretaps to try to make sure that nobody is going to be releasing any more secret information that he doesn't want out. So from May 10th to the 20th, we are going to have one of the major battles of the Vietnam War. And it is going to be fought over Hill 937, also known as Dong Op Bia, the Mountain of the Crouching Beast. It becomes known in America as Hamburger Hill. The hill has no real tactical significance at all. Taking the hill was part of just a larger operation to take out the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese in the area as soldiers were just doing reconnaissance and sweeping missions throughout the area. And so what happens is just on a normal everyday reconnaissance patrol, what happens is that a unit comes across an ambush of North Vietnamese who are well dug into positions on Hill 937. And I mean really well dug. They have mines all over the place. They have dug themselves bunkers uh, with logs around them that cannot be destroyed from the air. They have well-planned positions. So like, for example, when the American troops are trying to move up the hill, whenever they would hit these specific clearings in the area, 
then boom, they would be taken out so quickly from the enemy fire. So the fire or the enemy guns were positioned on these clearings, just waiting for the Americans to walk into the trap. So although it is a hill, the terrain is not necessarily playing much of a role in the battle, except for the Americans are trying to get up it and the North has the high ground. So it has that advantage that they can shoot down on the Americans. But the Americans, of course, have air power, which is sometimes good and sometimes not good, which we're going to be finding out um, with this. But when the battle begins, um, the North has uh, also the added advantage of the triple canopy jungle of the area which eventually is going to be destroyed. And as one soldier remarked after the battle was over, when standing at the top of the hill, he kind of looked around and said it looked like the moon, the surface of the moon. Everything was just gone, just gone. Um, so what are they sweet? Why are the Americans sweeping out this area? <clears throat> well, they're trying to stop infiltration routes or Ho Chi Minh Trail routes um, coming in from Laos into South Vietnam, especially here in the northern part of South Vietnam, uh, where you could be having now Viet Cong and North Vietnamese coming in to go to Hue or Da Nang, places that the Americans are trying to protect. So when these Americans are going and doing their reconnaissance mission and sweeping out the North Vietnamese, they face heavy resistance. Um, as the North, as I mentioned, we're so well fortified. And this turns into a 10-day fierce battle. The Hill got its name when a reporter asked a 19-year-old sergeant, James Spear, about the fighting. And he said, have you ever been inside a hamburger machine? We just got cut to pieces by extremely accurate machine gun fire. And so at this point in 1969, the U.S. is not necessarily used to the North standing ground like this. Sometimes it happens, but it's rare that they really stand ground at a position like this. And so that's like the United States and the South Vietnamese forces don't necessarily know exactly what they're going up against. But they do launch 11 assaults up the hill with thousands of troops until the North Vietnamese are going to eventually be dislodged and escape into Laos. At this point in time, the United States has half a million boots on the ground, half a million soldiers in Vietnam. And out of these half a million soldiers, we have roughly around 2,000 in this area. And so this is tough fighting. And what also happens during the middle of this fighting, well, it's actually closer to the end, we have this horrible rainstorm that comes down. And so everything is just turning into mud because already we have the jets and the helicopters going and bombing and sending missiles into the area, which is taking out the foliage and everything else. And now we have this torrential rain coming down the hill, turning everything into this horrible, horrible mudslide that the American troops have to deal with as they're trying to go up the hill. Also, which ha what happens during Hamburger Hill is that friendly fire occurs from the air. Yes, it can occur on the ground as people don't necessarily know who is who as people are moving, um, but it is really demoralizing when a jet and then on another time a helicopter went and um, shot at the American forces um, because you are trying to go up against an extremely well-situated uh, enemy. And now you're also not necessarily trusting your own air support that is supposed to be the support for you. And so the battle is very, very difficult for the Americans. They eventually take the hill on May 20th. Um, an estimated 630 North Vietnamese were killed and the U.S. casualties were listed as 72 killed and 372 wounded. As people remark that even from the start on May 10th, when that initial ambush hit, um, just the cries and the screams. Yeah, some people are screaming for a medic, but some people are simply just screaming because of the sheer pain and agony of being either hit by a mine, being hit by enemy um, gunfire, and all of the other things that can happen to you in battle. And just the constant firing, the noise, um, soldiers talking about how deafening that noise was 
um, with fighting Hamburger Hill, from the screens to the gunfire, from the jets to the helicopters, helicopters being shot down, other things, and just it unrelenting. So what happens as the Americans finally get up the hill and take it on May 20th? What is the big, the big prize that they get from it? Nothing. The United States eventually leaves the hill. They don't take it. There is no real tactical reason to just be sitting and maintaining this hill. They leave it. And so what's going to be happening on June 27th, 1969, Life magazine printed portrait photos of all 242 Americans killed in Vietnam during the previous week, including 46 of those killed at Hamburger Hill. The photos had a stunning impact on Americans nationwide as they view the once smiling young faces of the dead. I mean, these are young men that it kind of almost looks like a yearbook. Um, instead, these are people that now have passed away fighting for their country. And even more so, what is hurting is that Hamburger Hill is abandoned. So what was the point of the entire operation? Well, the U.S. Congress is actually going to start looking into this under um, Ted Kennedy, who goes and says that this battle was senseless and irresponsible. And so they go in and have congressional hearings to try to figure out what is happening in Vietnam. What is the point of having these 72 Americans go and die for this hill that has no tactical advantage and that is not necessarily helping win the war in the end? What is the point? And so that is what this kind of legacy is going to be for trying to figure this out. Now, of course, there is a movie, Hamburger Hill. Um, if you talk to veterans about it, they're going to say that it is, you know, it's a Hollywood film. Um, there is not the added benefits and perks of what you see in the movie to what actually happened there. So if you have time, you can go online and just search uh, veterans reactions to the movie Hamburger Hill and read that. And it's quite insightful to have, you know, the actual vets that experience it explaining what it would be like for them to see the recreation of it and just kind of going like, no, no, these things didn't happen. So, all right. So that is the end of part two for our lecture of 1969. Thank you much for listening. And if you have any comments, please make them below. Thank you very much.